Hey guys, today I'm gonna to go around, uh, talk about peri-workout nutrition. A you know, really common uh, set of questions is, what do I do before training? What do I do after training? Should I be doing anything during training? And it's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of, um, I guess, contradictions as to what you should be doing, but it really does come down to your goals, what time of the uh, day you train, and also, what you feel comfortable doing. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of, uh, I guess, golden rules that we wanna cover in this peri workout window. So all peri means is the time around your training, okay? Think sort of three hours before your training and two to three hours after your training. So that time period there. So this is a really important uh, part of your day in terms of nutrition, because it's a time that we can really maximize to make the most of that training session. We have to remember that the training session itself is catabolic. That means that we're actually breaking down muscle acutely. So what we wanna be doing in this window is protecting against that muscle breakdown and trying to go into what's called protein synthesis, that state where we're putting on muscle as quick as possible. We also wanna be making sure that we have enough energy for the workout uh, and that we're hydrated enough. So a couple of golden rules in this window is that we wanna have amino acids available. Now, if you go back to that protein video, you'll remember that amino acids are uh, the building blocks of protein. Okay, we have 20, there's 20 amino acids that make up protein. So we wanna have these available in our bloodstream when we go into our session because this availability helps helps the process of the muscle breakdown slow down and actually can prevent that muscle breakdown. It also helps increase protein synthesis, which is the point where we're putting on muscle. So you remember we're always we're always trying to find that uh, we're always sort of going backwards and forwards between the state of being catabolic where we're losing muscle versus the state where we're putting on muscle. And with strength training, with our nutrition around strength training, we really wanna focus on preventing that breakdown and increasing that building. Okay, that's, that's for strength, that's for body composition. So we want amino acids available. Number two, we want glucose available. We want glucose available because glucose is your energy source for your nervous system. Okay, and we want uh, our nervous system to be to be ready because we don't want our nervous system to give out before our muscular system. Let's say you're doing a set of uh, a set of ten squats. Okay, during that 10, 10 squats, you might have to stop at eight reps possibly because you if you don't have glucose available, your nervous system doesn't want to do any more. In that example, your nervous system is fatigued but we don't want the nervous system to become fatigued before our muscular system, because therefore, if we could have done 10 reps with our muscular system, but we could only get eight, it means that we're not uh, getting that progressive overload that we need to be able to get you stronger and to apply the stimulus to be putting on muscle and losing fat. So we need glucose available for the nervous system, but we also need glucose to help uh, protect against that glycogen depletion. Glycogen is just the stored form of glucose in our muscle cell, which actually this glycogen powers our muscular contractions. So it helps protect against that depletion as well. So towards the back end of your workout, your muscular system is also gonna be able to keep on pushing. So without glucose available, you're not gonna be able to get as much out of your training session you might actually feel like you're getting as much, but that's just because your rate of perceived exertion is higher, okay? Because you don't have the availability there. So you're definitely gonna be able to get more out of your training if there's glucose available. Number three is hydration. We need hydration, okay? Our muscle cells are actually made up of 75% water, only about 18% protein. So the water is actually the much more um, important factor. With a loss of even uh, 3% of body water, okay, a muscular endurance dramatically decreases. So if you're just a little bit dehydrated, uh, let's say you're doing a set of uh, 15 squats this time, okay, you might only be able to get to 10 if you're dehydrated. Okay, and that's just very, very slight dehydration. So 
we want amino acid availability in this time. We want um, glucose availability in this time. We want hydration. And we also want to do all of these things without any uh, GI, without any gastrointestinal upset, okay, which is really important because some people can tolerate different things in terms of what they eat, what they consume before training. So a couple of, uh, I guess, so they're the four golden rules. And then we want to think about how is this going to be practical for you? So to make sure that we have amino acids av available, glucose available, and we have adequate nutrition or adequate hydration without causing any GI support, ideally, okay, one to three hours before your session, you have a meal. This meal, if it's sort of three hours, two hours before, you want a little bit uh, lower GI, so glycemic index in terms of your carbs that you're having, so more slow releasing carbs. Okay, just think less processed in this instance. We want slower releasing so we have a good trickle of energy right up to our session and throughout our session. We want protein. Okay, we also want protein uh, so we have that amino acid availability at this time. So typically uh, about a one to one ratio. So for for men, this might be about 30 to 45 grams of carbs and also of protein at this time. For women, normally a little bit less, 20 to 30 grams of carbs and protein at this time. Depending on how much before your training session as to whether you want a lot of fat in there or not. If it's uh, you know three hours before, four hours before, then definitely get some fats in there. That can help slow down the release of, um, of that carb and the protein in the bloodstream as well. If it's more like two hours before, then try and keep fats to a minimal because we don't want uh, that rate slowing down anymore, which is what fats do. It slows down that rate of absorption. So that's the ideal scenario, okay? Eating sort of one to three hours before your session sort of 30 to 45 grams of carbs and protein for men and or uh, and a little bit less for women. If this is not available, so let's say you're training at 4.30 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. and you don't want to get up two hours before to eat a solid meal, then we go to the next option which is having something liquid. Okay, something liquid is going to be same sort of ratios, about one to one, but that's going to be more like um, you know a, a protein a protein shake with a banana in it, for example. So we're having some carbs and some protein still. We're still getting that amino acid availability. You're still getting that glucose availability. Okay, so that's that's sort of the golden rules. Okay, we want we want something in the system before we're training, ideally. If you just don't feel good at all. Uh, having anything in the belly before you train. So you train at 4.30 a.m., 5.30 a.m. and you either don't have the time, you don't want to wake up early enough, or you just don't like training with anything in the belly, then what happens during and post-training is even more important. Okay, so then we're looking at uh, during training. Okay, during training for more advanced guys and girls, we should be trying to still get some protein and carbs with it uh, in, okay, through a liquid, a liquid drink. If you don't like drinking anything throughout the session, then try and have something immediately, immediately after. And this is more important, okay, for people that are put, trying to put on muscle, but also anyone that's training fasted. If you're training fasted, so if you haven't had, if you have, if you haven't had any food uh, overnight and you're training in the morning, or if you haven't had any food for the last six hours, five hours in tra training in the afternoon, then getting something post-workout is really important. Now, in terms of what we're getting post-workout, okay, we definitely want some protein again. We want we want that amino acid availability for the same reasons. In terms of how much. So how much depends on how much protein you're getting throughout the day. As a very, without going into and breaking it down too much, okay, basically uh, 
bigger guys, okay, heavier, heavier guys, aim for 30 to 40 grams of protein post-session. Uh, lighter guys and girls aim for 20 to 30 grams of protein post-session. That's immediately post-session. And then in terms of uh, glucose, so we want to replenish the glycogen that we have just taken out of the muscle cell. Okay, this is really, really important for protein th synthesis, for putting on muscle. We need glycogen present as soon as possible to help what's called mTOR, which is a signaling process <coughs> of, uh, that we need to go through to put on muscle. So in terms of carbs after a session, <clears throat> so in terms of carbs after a session, what we want to be looking at is really dependent on how much carbs you're having each day. So let's say your goal was 200 gram of grams of carbs per day. We want to be having about 40% of your carbs for the day in that peri-workout window. So that's um, just before, during, and after your training. Okay, so... If you're having 200 grams of uh, carbs per day, you're going to be looking at about 80 grams of carbs split between uh, that time. So let's say you're having, you're just having um, a intra workout drink and a post workout drink. You want to be getting about two thirds of your carbs of that 80 grams in that post workout window, and about one third during the session. Okay, so about 40% of your total carbs is all you really need to know in that uh, window of either during training and after training or just after training. If you're carrying extra fat, so if you're, you know, if your really big goal is to lose, lose body fat because you are um, carrying too much, so you're not already lean, then you want to still have some carbs post training, but you don't need carbs during training, and you also just want to cut down that ratio a little bit. So typically, if you're uh, very overweight, let's say, then you want to just be having about 20 to 30 grams of carbs post training. So this is still important because we still want to replenish glycogen in the muscle cell, and the more, the quicker we can do that, then the quicker we're gonna recover, okay? The quicker we're gonna get back to our baseline levels for protein synthesis. And it's also been shown that uh, straight after a resistance training session, okay, even people carrying a lot of extra fat are a lot more insulin sensitive. So you're going to be able to deal with those carbs in a way that's gonna help support uh, body composition, not with you know putting on weight. So, and then after training, you can also get some more fats in if you like, okay? But just know that is gonna slow down that rate of absorption. So I'm just gonna recap this here. So we have the peri-workout window, okay? That's sort of up to three hours before and a couple of hours after your training and throughout your training. Golden rules, we want amino acids available. So we want some protein in the system. We want some glucose in the system and we want adequate uh, hydration all without causing any, any um, GI, GI upset. So GI upset can be bloating, it can be diarrhea, it can be gas. Um, you know, all these things that, that we think about when we think about digestion. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Uh, shoot me any questions if you have any. Like I said, it's, it's a little bit individual, but there are some golden rules there to follow. Uh, thinking about the one to three hours before, if possible, with a solid meal. If that isn't possible, then zero to 45 minutes before the session. If that still isn't possible, then the intra, so the during, and especially the after becomes more, uh, even more important in terms of replenishing the protein and the glycogen. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Shoot me any questions if you have any. See you.